remember the a uh, few weeks ago, uh, Reverend Dwight McKissick put forth a resolution at the Southern Baptist Convention calling on them to condemn white supremacy. Well, initially, the SBC uh, didn't really want to pursue it. They said it wasn't written properly. That insulted Dwight McKissick uh, from Arlington, Texas. Uh, then, of course, uh, they then was, were first forced to take it up. Uh, it was approved, but it wasn't unanimous. Now, an African-American minister said he is through with the Southern Baptist Convention. Lawrence Ware, he's the co-director of Oklahoma State University's Center for African Studies. He's a minister who was ordained by the SBC. He is renouncing that predominantly white denomination over its support for and the issue of white supremacy. He joins us right now from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, so, Lawrence, uh, first and foremost, the resolution passed, but they were forced to do it. And, and Reverend McKissick said point blank, there are people in uh, the Southern Baptist Convention who love to play footsie with white supremacists. Absolutely. And ultimately, it frustrated me that it wasn't adopted immediately. And so since it took so long for them to adopt the resolution, it took the next day. They had to have a break, change some of the language, and then the next day they adopted the resolution. It was absolutely frustrating for me. And then beyond that, they changed some of the language. In my eyes, they made it a little softer, and they took out something uh, that was kind of very central about the curse of Ham, which was part of the reason why the Southern Baptist Convention supported slavery uh, back before the Civil War. And so uh, with them making those changes, and then not immediately adopting that resolution, I was done. I was ready to go. And what you have here, you have many folks, first of all, you have the SBC, a lot of churches in red states, supporters of Donald Trump, who himself was extremely cozy with white supremacists. Has a white supremacist had a white supremacist? Well, has a white supremacist in the White House with Steve Bannon. And so for them to be comfortable um, with, with with these kinds of developments, not speaking out directly. In fact, I knew of a Southern Baptist church that the day before, uh, the, the Sunday before the election had Ben Carson up giving a sermon. With that, it's, it's just something that I, I, I couldn't, I didn't want to be associated with that denomination anymore. It was time for me to go. And in fact, it was a long time coming. I'd been writing pieces for a while on places like Very Smart Brothers and places like New Black Men in Exile uh, with Mark Anthony Neal. Uh, and The Root just, just really, expressing my discontent with what's been happening, particularly within the context of white evangelicalism. Uh, and then with, with these things that I mentioned in the piece, uh, it really brought things to a head for me. And I needed people to know that I was not a part of the convention, but I needed to do it in a public sphere. Well, of course, we know. The, why did you join in the first place, and what did you expect? Well, I was raised in uh, kind of the Southern Baptist Convention, so it, it wasn't one of those things where I looked at their history and said, you know what, that's something that I want to join. Uh, you know, really, it was just something I was just kind of raised into. Um, and I just kind of went along and was quiet with it for a while. But ultimately, my moral stance kind of uh, took me in a different direction. And one of the inspirations for me was King's letter from a Birmingham jail. That was something that really, really because I teach a class on Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X up here at Oklahoma State University. But, 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 but Lawrence, let's also say that uh, here, there are a number of black churches that belong to the Southern Baptist Convention, large, largely because of uh, benefits, uh, various support. I mean, you, 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 have, you, have this, you, have, you have an infrastructure within the SBC that assist these churches in, with their staff, staff development, and growing. And so, so a lot of people out there don't quite understand denominations and conventions in terms of what the SBC really does for uh, churches. No, you hit, the, you hit the nail on the head because for many individuals, uh, it's, a, it's a financial decision. Right, because oftentimes the SBC will provide retirement benefits for pastors uh, and in a black Baptist church or just Baptist churches in general that are self-governing. Uh, sometimes the church isn't making enough money to provide retirement for the pastor. So sometimes pastors will go along for that reason. And then beyond that, a lot of churches are in debt uh, and uh, the SBC will, will provide funds to help with that building fund and that light bill fund uh, that, that black pastors are quite quite good at raising money for. And so there, it's oftentimes not moral reasons, uh, it's, f it's fiscal reasons for why, for why many decide to stay. And so I'm not a pastor of a church. Um, I, I work, I'm on staff at a church, but I'm not a pastor of a church. And so I don't, you know, I don't have my hand out to them for anything. And so it was easy for me to go. 
Fred Luter, we had him right here on the Tom Jones Morning Show when he was uh, elected president of the Southern Baptist Convention in 2012. He was the first African American to do so. Many people obviously hailed that decision, that, uh, that history making decision. But again, what you have here also, I believe, uh, you have the dance going on, the political dance, uh, where uh, there are a lot of Trump supporters who are in the SBC, and let's just be honest, Lawrence, they've been real quiet on this health care bill impacting their folks. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these white folks in the SBC took this as a condemnation of Trump and not just white supremacists. Right, and I think it's important for us to kind of put this in context because uh, the SBC has been comfortable with allowing certain things to go on. Now, just because we have a few, a one or two, as Cornell West would say, you know, black faces in high places, doesn't mean that we have a substantive change in the culture of the SBC. Yeah, they have people of color in certain kinds of positions, but uh, they have not really done what they needed to do to change the culture that allows things like the alt-right to gain traction in the SBC and in SBC churches. They haven't really done what they needed to do to, to kind of fundamentally change the nature of white supremacy. Um, and with them particularly taking things out like the Curse of Ham, they're still not really wrestling with the white supremacist kind of origins of their convention uh, and really dealing with how they they sometimes in the past used the Bible to justify their abhorrent positions. And Sybil, let's also be clear, when you think about the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, you also uh, have folks there who are unwilling to confront their past. And guess which group, Tom, is the largest, uh, who was actually joining the SPC at a larger, faster rate than anybody else? Black churches. Black. Mm. Wow. Black churches. So, so SBC money. has seen a decrease of the membership because of white churches, but they're but they've been able to sustain themselves because of black churches. And, and they probably churches. have a president that they can like and love in the White House. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you, Lawrence, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.